Greetings. So I'm changing something up if you watched the Thursday video where I said I wasn't going to have a video this Thursday because I was going to be putting something out to celebrate the 20th anniversary of my being self-employed. Well, it turns out as I was working on the blog post uh, talking about my 20th anniversary, I looked up my business certificate and it turns out that the anniversary date is actually June 22nd. <laughs> So at least for the last 10 years, I've been thinking it was the 24th. I have no idea why, but I was close. So I will be putting out my blog post on the 22nd, which is the Tuesday. I'm going to do my business video on the 23rd, and I'm not sure what topic I'm gonna to talk about yet. And I'm going to do my regular video on this channel on the 24th. Not that there's going to be a whole lot of people who care, but you never know. Every once in a while, I hit something and it goes, goes viral and YouTube loves me for a couple of weeks. So here's what I want to talk about today. I've mentioned my shoulder surgery enough times. It's now three months. So I go see the lady, um, the nurse for my surgeon on Monday, and she asked me how I'm doing. I said, you know, my arm just feels like it's getting worse all of a sudden. I thought I was going okay. Yes, I still can't raise my arm above my waist, but you know, I was doing exercises, wasn't feeling any pain. And now I've got all this pain that's coming back and it's waking me up during the night. I'm not sleeping well at all. And I told her about the Mex Meloxicam that I took myself off of because I'd had some trouble with that. She said, you know, we just have not done you well with medications. I'm sorry about that. So she tells me the type of surgery I had it takes a little longer to heal and it's probably going to be between six and nine months to which I said to her, you know, I thought it was going to be done initially in four weeks. And then when that was done and I knew that wasn't going to happen, I thought we were talking three to four months. So it's just extending. She said, well, you know, the surgery you had is a lot more extensive than you thought it was. Anyway, she asked me, do I want a muscle relaxer? And I'm thinking, well, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I said, what would that do? She says, well, it'll help to ease the pain so you can sleep better. I said, let me think about that because I'm not necessarily sure. Then we talked about the ibuprofen that I'd been taking. And she said, well, you could take 2,400 milligrams of ibuprofen a day. Maybe you should take six in the morning and then six in the evening. And then that way it spaces itself out. That might help. So I'm thinking, okay, that sounds good. Because truthfully, even though I hadn't been taking ibuprofen in the morning, I had been taking it in the evening and I'd been taking 1000 milligrams anyway. So I figure, okay, I'm good. Then I come home from that after physical therapy and I decide to look up the surgery because I really had never looked it up online. And it turns out what they do is they drill a hole into your bone, into the shoulder bone thing. And then they take the tendons and they pull it through this hole and they tie it off. What? I never knew that they had drilled a hole into the bone. I kept thinking maybe they just use some kind of super glue <laughs> it's the silliest thing in the world but that's where my mind went well they just they stuck it on there somehow and now we do all this and it grows in the bone and attaches i have a weird imagination at times i had no clue so anyway i go through the rest of the week and i'm just not doing well i'm not sleeping well the pain is getting worse so on Friday, after physical therapy, I walked over to the office because they're in the same building right across the hall from each other. And I said, could you speak to the nurse and tell her I want to try the muscle relaxer? Now, Thursday night, I decided that I was going to ask for it. So I go online and I'm looking up muscle relaxers in general because I really didn't know anything about them. And I had had it before, but I was 17 years old and I didn't remember how that worked. I have no idea what it did for me or anything. Um, that was a fluke accident that I had had and it was just miserable timing. So I totally forgot about it. How do you forget about that kind of pain? <laughs> it's beyond me. But then again, women have more than one baby, no matter how painful that first one is. So yeah. Anyway, um, I looked it up and I was worried because one of the things that kept talking about, uh, cause I went to more than one page is that sometimes people get addicted to muscle relaxers. And you have to be very cautious in how you, you take them. And I'm thinking, eh, boy, something else I had to worry about. You know, uh, years ago, I had to worry about, um, 
hydrocortisone or whatever that stuff was called. Anyway, I've had to worry about things that were going to get you addicted. I had oxycodone and I said, you know, I only took that for a couple of days. So I worried about the muscle relaxer. I said, yeah, I'm going to ask her anyway. So I asked them if they would ask her uh, to go ahead and do a prescription. So about five hours later, I get an email telling me that I've got a prescription. And 10 minutes after that, I get the phone call from Wegmans, which is our major grocery chain in the you know Central New York area, telling me that it is in. So I go over there and I get this stuff. And I'm going to read it off the bottle so I don't pronounce it wrong. Cyclobenzaprine. And I looked that up and supposedly it's one of the milder muscle relaxers. And I'm supposed to take it three times a day if needed. It's Well, basically I'm supposed to take it three, day, three times a day, but it does say as needed, thank goodness, because I only planned on taking it in the evening to help me sleep. During the day, I can handle any pain. It doesn't really bother me at all. But at night, when stuff keeps waking you up, that's miserable. So last night, was the first time I took it. And I took the pill around 10 o'clock along with my other meds because I figured, you know, I'm going to go to bed between 11.30 and 12. That would give it enough time to kick in. And it didn't kick in at that part. Uh, I woke up around 4.30 and I was just miserable. The shoulder was bothering me. I said, this stuff isn't working. So I get up to go to the bathroom. I come back, laying there a little bit, just couldn't get to sleep, decided, you know what, I'm going to put the sling back on. And... For those of y'all who know about this, because uh, I did it in my very first video where I talked about the shoulder surgery, before I had it, I showed the sling. You know, it, it's basically the thing to keep your arm still. And I figured maybe I just need to solidify the arm so it's not moving around as much and maybe I'll sleep better. And I slept better, but it wasn't because of the sling. This stuff kicked in. And I woke up at 8.25. Most of the time, I've been waking up between, I'll say, 6 and 7.15. So I slept until 8.15 and I woke up and I was groggy. I was exhausted. I couldn't go back to sleep for whatever reason, but I was just so tired. My brain was foggy and fuzzy. And I laid there, like I said, for about 30 minutes trying to figure out what's going on, you know. And I knew it was the muscle relaxer. It couldn't be anything else. Even though I did take three ibuprofen with it, I did not take an ibuprofen PM. And I can take ibuprofen with muscle relaxers. So there you go. So I said, oh man, I'm fuzzy. So I got up and I go into the kitchen and I get some really cold water out of the fridge. And I'm drinking this cold water and my head's laughing at me. Saying, no, 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 that ain't going to work. Then I said, you know what, let's just get dressed and take a walk around the neighborhood. Maybe I need some air. And I happened to pick a time where, <laughs> this doesn't happen often in Central New York, but at 8.45 in the morning or 9 o'clock, somewhere within that time period, it was 77 degrees already. And I get outside and it's humid. Because it had rained last night, and I guess it rained this morning, and then the sun was out when I was ready to go. But it was just so humid, it was miserable. Still, I walked. I walked very slow because I don't do heat well and I don't do humidity well, but I still was going to make this, this walk around. So I'm walking around the neighborhood. I run into this woman who I had met a couple of weeks ago, you know, out in front of her house when I was looking at the rhododendrons. And she's walking with me and she's talking to me and telling me all kind of stories and stuff. And you know what? It helped a little bit for me to concentrate because I was walking really slow and she was older than me so she was walking about the same pace I was and I told myself I should be ashamed that I wasn't walking any faster but you know what heat and humidity are not my friends so we we parted at a certain place I walked back toward the house and this uh, SUV pulls up and it was this guy who I had met many weeks ago As a matter of fact before I took the sling off for good. I walked in front of his house, other people, he said, oh, you, did you have the rotator cuff surgery way back when? I said, yes, I did. And we talked about it a little bit, but he had other company. So he sees me and he stops. He says, so how's it going? I said, is it three months and it hurts so bad? He says, yeah, that happened to me. I said, really? He says, yeah. I said, I didn't even know really what they did until a couple of days ago where I looked it up and saw they drilled a hole. He said, yeah, I, I found that out too. They pull the hole through and then they tie it off and it stays there. I said, that is just the oddest thing. He said, you're probably going to have pain for another two to three weeks and then it'll start easing off again. And I said, well, last night I took my first uh, muscle relaxer 
and it has just drained me. I can't seem to get myself going here. He said, yeah, I only took it for a couple of days. I decided I didn't like the feeling, and I just dealt with it. So that's him. Me, I said, I don't know that I still want to deal with this. I, you know, But I came home, got in the house. I'm still logy because, like I said, the walk didn't do anything. I just really had trouble breathing. I was miserable. So I decided I'm going to make some iced tea. So I make some iced tea. Basically, it turns out to be three cups of iced tea because I'm thinking more cold liquid. Maybe this will help me some. And it's tea. Uh, it's caffeine in it. Just like a lot of people drink coffee, I drink iced tea. Drinking some of this, it ain't working. I'm just, wow, when's this going to wear off? And I understood how come when I was reading about muscle relaxers, it says that you shouldn't drive if you're taking muscle relaxers. Because I was sitting there thinking, I can't, I can't drive. I can't go anywhere if I'm still feeling like this. So I'm on Slack talking, you know, messaging with my friend Mitchell Allen. And he says, you know, if it was me, I'd just go back to bed and see if I could, you know, sleep through it or rest through it. So I said, you know what? That seems like a good idea. Except I couldn't actually go back to sleep because I have a CPAP. And I had taken all my components off and taken all the plastic off and put it in a plastic bag. And I'm running this basically oxidized machine called Clean Zone, which I did an inter uh, interview. <laughs> you, can't, you can't interview stuff. Uh, but I did a review on it some months ago, and it's turned out to be a really popular video. So I'm not mad at that. But I had it all hooked up. So I couldn't just put that on and breathe. So what did I do instead? I turned on the ceiling fan on high. And I basically just put the pillow over my head, put earplugs in, and just tried to breathe. And then after about 10 minutes, I got my neck massager, and I put that on there. Because a lot of times, when it runs, it runs about 15 minutes. And then when it quits, sometimes I fall asleep. So I was just hoping that if that happened, maybe I'll fall asleep without being able to breathe with the CPAP. And that's what happened. It still took a while, and I only set the alarm for 45 minutes because I had stuff to do. And I set the alarm, and I still beat the alarm by about three minutes. And I had fallen asleep briefly, very briefly, but I felt, wow, my head is now clear. I'm not foggy anymore. I'm not tired anymore. My shoulder hurts a little bit. My neck hurts a little bit, but I can deal with it because it's daytime. So that was weird. So what am I doing? Well... Y'all are seeing this on a Sunday. Actually, if you're up, you may see this late Saturday night. I decided I was going to go ahead and take another one tonight. I took it earlier than I did last night because last night I took it around 10. Tonight I took it a little bit after 8. I'm hoping that it tires me out by midnight because, like I said, last night it probably took about four, four and a half hours for it to kick in. So I'm trying that. Hopefully I will sleep through the night, sleep better, and I'm going to wear the sling as soon as I get in bed, I'm wearing that sling all night long, and we're going to see what happens. <sighs> Why am I the guy experimenting with all these things for everybody else? Because this is what I do. I mean, I've been doing some review things, but let's talk about these things. I might as well talk about the muscle relaxers. I'm not the first person to ever take them, but maybe there's not a lot of people who talk about them. Just like everything else that I was doing along this path of um, after the shoulder surgery and things that have been happening, there's not a ton of people who talk about these things. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm hoping it's somewhat entertaining as well. You just never know. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, for those of you who have your fathers, call your fathers or go visit your fathers, stick with your fathers. My dad passed away, goodness, what is it? 19 years ago on Father's Day. That was June 16th. Um, so I don't have the luxury. And I put a post on Facebook earlier this afternoon where I said, you know, the last picture I got of my dad was 18 months before he passed away. Because back then, cell phones didn't take pictures and we were never a family <clears throat> that had a lot of cameras. So I feel bad about that. I mean, nowadays I take pictures of everything along the way and I wish I had more update pictures of my dad like I had pictures of my mother that I wish I had more pictures of mom before she got dementia. <sighs> Don't do that. Take some pictures of your family members, pictures of your father, uh, pictures of your grandfather. You know, that's just the thing to do. Anyway, my name is Mitch Mitchell. 
love. By the way, it says love wins. So <laughs> love does win. Love your family. Love yourselves. Wow. How deep is that? My name is Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care.